deliverance. There is a birthing, but also th there's a birthing, there's a new beginning. There, there, there are new things that are, that are taking place. That's why it feels like, if you notice, it feels like the calm before the storm. It feels like something is getting ready to happen. Something's getting ready to take place in your life. And it, it almost feels like a lot of people are restless. A lot of people are restless because they're anticipating something. You know how it is when you, um, you know, you're going to go on a trip. You're going to go on a vacation tomorrow. You're going to go to Hawaii or go to islands or something like that. But that night before, and you're just so excited. You're so excited. And a lot of times you can't sleep. So you see, because your nerves, because your mind is already, your mind is already at getting on that flight. Your mind is already, hello, hello. Your mind is already on that uh, uh, once you get to your destination. And so this is where, this is where I see uh, many of God's people at. Many of God's people are so excited. And there's, there's, there's such an expectation that, that many people are restless. They're restless in expectation. And so that's what hope is. Hope is expecting. When you have hope, hope means I'm expecting. Faith means right now I'm going to do whatever I can right now to get to my hope, to get to my promise. It's like having a dream and dream, trying to fulfill that dream. And so this is what's happening. This is what's happening. At the same time, at the same time, uh, we need to realize that, like I've been mentioning about um, the dog, the dog that's the dog that has the ability to, to produce the dog that's, I guess, ovulating and um, the dog or the dog that's that's releasing a certain type of um, aroma, a certain type of fragrance or something like that. Just as an example. And but what happens, I, I even talked about um, a lot of times when I was a kid, we had female dogs. And when they were about when they, when they had the ability to get pregnant, when they were at that place where they were in heat, <laughs> I guess that's the word when they were in heat. That's when other dogs would come around. God bless you. God bless you. That's when other dogs would come around at the gate trying to get in the gate. And so this is what I uh, this is what I see. It's almost like the uh, um, was it the uh, um, the three uh, was it the, uh, the the three bears or whatever the huff puff and blow your blow your house down with the bad bit bad wolf. And so that's what I see. I, I see the adversary is trying to huff and puff. I see him trying to huff and puff. He's not just huffing, he's puffing. And so in other words, he's blowing smoke. He's blowing smoke and he's trying to intimidate. He's trying to intimidate you with fear. He's trying to intimidate you with fear. Somebody put in the comments, God did not give us the spirit of fear. Somebody put in the comment, God did not give us a spirit of fear. God don't want us to be afraid. And see, that's what the adversary wants. He wants to inflict or he wants to interject. He wants to put inside of us inside the believer fear see because when you become afraid you know what happens you become paralyzed you can't move you're stuck that's what happens when fear comes in fear it fear stops you from thinking clear and so many of you you're in a place where you're not thinking clear because of fear because of the nervousness but god wants you to relax god did not give us a spirit of fear because the thing about with the spirit of fear fear brings torment so you felt paralyzed last night, but you're free now, over. See, fear brings torment, and and to that spirit of fear, speak speak against it. Say, I rebuke the spirit of fear. I rebuke the spirit of fear. Somebody put in the comments, I rebuke the spirit of fear. I'm gonna get the prayer, but God is leading me another direction. He's leading me another another direction. Somebody say, I rebuke the spirit of fear. I rebuke the spirit of fear. Amen. And so that's that's what that's what he wants. See, because he wants you to become faith, fearful enough and afraid of enough where you miss what God is saying. It's almost like when something is getting ready to happen, it's almost like, you know, on on television, on television, just an example on television, you know, on television, you're watching this program, right? You're watching this program, right? And at the point where it's about to all climax, uh, the program, the story. It's about to you. Uh, it's about to come to head. It's about to come to the head. It's about to come to what the plot was about in the story. And at the point where the plot is about to unfold, this is where either the TV turns off, or the power goes off, or uh, someone tries to call you, or someone tries to get your attention to get your attention away from that particular moment. That particular moment. That particular moment. That that particular moment. That's what I see. I see. I see the adversary is trying to. Trying to and use people, people who are weaker or who don't recognize 
how they are being used by, by, the, by the adversary. He's trying to use them to get you distracted, to get your mind off of what God is saying. To get your mind off of what God is saying right now. Because it's so important with what God is saying. That's why he said, uh, he that has an ear, let the spirit, uh, let, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. See, God wants you to have an ear concerning what he has to say. He wants you to have an ear. He wants you to have an ear. And so when you have your ear, when you have an ear, then you're going to receive what he's saying. And in you having an ear, uh, that word, that word is going to, that word is going to, is going to get inside of your ear. That word is going to ring inside your ear. See, God wants his word to ring inside your ear. He wants his word to ring inside your ear so loud that the only thing you will hear is his word. Somebody say, somebody put in the comment, God ring inside of my ear. God ring inside of my ear. And so when God's sound is there, see, God takes up, uh, he takes up resonance. So that means that where God is, can nothing abide, can nothing exist. And see, God, just like I mentioned about that, that dog being, um, that dog being, in heat, but surrounded by that gate. And so you'll be surrounded. God is, you, you'll been covered by, and you'll be surrounded by God's gates. You'll be surrounded by God's power, his glory. You'll be surrounded. He's covering you. And so don't be afraid. And in you not being afraid, uh, don't, don't allow anyone to distract you. Because, see, God is speaking and God is calling, but other things are calling too. Just know that there's so many voices, there's so many sounds that are going on, but recognize God's voice. See, because when you belong to God, you're going to know his voice. You're going to know his voice beyond any other kind of voice. Any kind of voice of manipulation, any kind of voice of, of, of hurt, any kind of voice of bitterness, any kind of voice of fear, distractions, or whatever it is, you're going to recognize the difference. You will recognize God's voice from any other voice. You will. See, because when God's voice speaks, Inside of us, there's this thing called instincts. Instincts. And instincts is, if I can define instinct, instincts is an inborn pattern of behavior. It's inward. There's an inborn pattern of behavior uh, that, that responds to stimuli. So in other words, there's a pattern that's inside of us that when God speaks, when God moves or whatever it does, something inside of us is going to jump and recognize and identify with God. It's going to leap. It's going to leap. And see what God is doing. God is speaking to you in a way that he's causing you to leap. In, in your situation, that situation might be trying to hold you and, and keep you stuck. It's trying to stick you. It's trying to keep you bound. But God is sending a word to you that is going to cause you to leap out of your situation. He's going to cause you to leap out of your, that, that soul tie. He's going to cause you to leap out, leap out of that thing that's trying to hold you back, trying to tie your mind up. He's going to cause truth. And clarity to leap in your mind and cause confusion to go. I hope you hear me and I hope you listen to me. God is God is turning things around, but you got to you got to stay inside the gate. Stay inside the gate. Stay inside it. Stay inside the gate. And don't get caught up with distractions. And people and people that are, are holding you back and trying to slow you down, avoid them. Lay aside every weight. This is a weight laid aside. If it's something that's make, making you heavy. If it's something that's blocking you from uh, really going after God, lay it aside. Lay aside anything. If it's the television, lay it aside. If it's your kids, come on, lay it aside. If it's coming between you and God, see, because God is greater than your kids. He created your kids. He created you. You got to put God first. God comes first. Number one, not your spouse, not your husband, not your wife. God, not your kids, not your mama, not your daddy. God, God comes first. Because he said, if I be lifted up, I'm going to draw a man, but seek ye first his kingdom and all things be added. And so there's certain things, certain desires that you have. There's certain desires that you're praying and believing God for. And God knows your desires. So, but what God wants you to do, he sees your desire. He got a pity on your desire. He wants you to do his will. Because in you doing his will, your desire, as you're doing his will, your desire is coming to you. Hear me. Hear me. Listen to me. When you're doing his will, at the same time, simultaneously, your desire is coming to you. Your desires, your heart's desires are coming to you. But you got to do his will. You got to you, you got, you, you got to wholly follow him. You got, you got to be consistent. You got to maintain your way. They're coming. Your desires are coming simultaneously as, as you're doing his will. So keep doing his will. Delight yourself in him. 
If you delight yourself in Allah, he'll give you desire. Delight yourself in a meaning that you're always delighted about him. So in other words, he's always on your mind. You're always thinking about him. You're always pondering about him. You're always thinking about him. You got to thought about him. That, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, seek him. Desires. Seek him. Go after him. Amen. Amen. Seek him. Seek him. So let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Actually, let's pray. Let's pray. Go after him. Go after him. Go after him. Go after him. Don't let nothing get in your way. Don't let nothing get in your way. Keep on delighting yourself in him. Somebody put in the comment, God, God, I'm going to delight myself in you. Somebody put in the comments, God, I'm going to like myself in you. Then after that, I'm going to go into a word of prayer. Somebody put in the comment, God, I am going to delight myself in you. God, I'm going to trust you. God, I'm going to serve you. God, I'm going to worship you. <coughs> God, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. God, I'm not going to give up. God, I'm not going to throw in the towel. God, I'm going to trust you to the end. And God, this feeling that I have, this feeling that I have, God, God, I'm going to let it die. It was a feeling of, of pain. It was a feeling of whatever it is that's just trying to pull on me and, and stop me from doing your will. I'm going to ignore it because you said in your word, if I submit myself unto you, you told me, God, if I got my, if I put my face in your face, if I put my eyes on you and then you give me the strength because I submitted myself unto you, you give me the strength to resist the devil. And so the, the thing that you need to do, you, you must first go to God, go to God and submit yourself to God. In other words, humble yourself, humble yourself and say, God, I give it to you. Whatever it is that's in the way, God, I give it to you. If it's my heart, God, I give you my heart. If it's my hurt, God, I give you my hurt. If it's my pride, God, I give you my pride. If it's whatever it is that's going on with me, if it's whatever the confusion, God, I give it to you now. And when you give it to God, God is going to pick it up. And God is going to open that door up for you. Trust him. Trust him and don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. And see, the thing about it, anytime there's resistance, Anytime there's a fight, and see, the reason why you, you're being fought against is because you got something of value. You got something. The Bible said, God said, hidden these treasures in earthen vessels. And see, God, the, the treasures of God is in you, in your heart. And the, and the enemy and the adversary, he's after your goods. The adversary is after your goods. That's what he said. That's why he's fighting you. Tooth and nail. Because he wants what you got. Yeah, he does. And, and he'll try to get it by any means necessary. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. And I magnify your name. You're worthy, God. Of all of our praise, God. Bless. And we thank you for coming here today, God. We thank you for the word. God, we thank you for those that heard the word. God, we thank you for those that received the word, God. And God, those that see, see this word, God. God, let it leap in their spirit for life. Let it leap in their spirit, God, with victory. Let it leap in their spirit with joy. And God, for those people who are down, who came here down, God, they're being lifted up right now. God, meet them right where they are. They're not just coming on here by chance, but they're coming on for a reason, God. And now that they come on here, God, meet them like never before. God, hit them in the chest with, hit them with the chest with joy. Hit them in the chest with peace of mind, God. Hit them in their mind with understanding, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. God, from this day forward, God, as they come, God, let their life and let everything they do be different. Let everything they say be different. Let they walk be different. Just like, just like it was with Jacob. When Jacob, he was alone. At that place where he was alone because he thought he was going to die. And at that place where he was alone, God, he met you. And God, there are people that are listening to me right now. They're alone. They're by themselves. Somebody done stole something from them. Somebody done, done robbed them. Somebody done, done hooked with them, bamboozled them. And they're the place, God, they're alone. And they're preparing to die. And at that place where they're preparing to die mentally, emotionally, God, come in the room. Come in the room, God. And come in the room, God, and become become, uh, become that burning bush experience to them right now, God. God, become that Damascus road encounter with them right now. And in both cases, God, they had to take off something. In both cases, God, God, you change something in them, God, with light. God, send your light, God, in their dark situation, God. Send that light and expose that darkness and reveal yourself. God, just like you, just like you said and did what David did. See, David knew you so much, God. He trusts you so much, God. And he said, God, if I laid my bed in hell, God, I know you'll be there. And God, many, many feel like they're laying in hell right now. They're laying in there. They feel like it. They feel like it. God, even in the day, God, go in there. Lay down there with them, God. God, send your power there with them. Let them know you. Let God, let them know that you're there with them. 
If they're on the floor and can't get up, God, lay down there with them and let them know you're there with them. God, whatever condition they're in, God, teach them how to be content and let them know that. And whatever they go through, God, one thing you want to tell them, your grace is sufficient. Your grace is sufficient. And whatever they go through, they need to realize and understand that your grace is sufficient. Whatever kind of pain that they're going through, whatever kind of rejection they're going through, whatever kind of hurt they're going through, your grace is sufficient. Things are not right in their life. Things are bad in their life. Things are horrible in their life, God. But your grace. And so, in other words, your grace is more than enough. God, you put you put the necessary strength. You put the necessary authority. You, you put the necessary power in them that caused them to be able to make it. And not just make it, God. God, live. God, because what they need to realize and understand, God, the thing that we suffer is making us stronger. And it's making us closer to you. And so in our suffering, God, this is how we get closer to you. God, in our suffering, this is revelation now that's coming, God. God, you open our eyes up to things. This is our, our open experience, God, through our suffering, God. And God, so we thank you that in our suffering, God, you're in there with us. Because even when we're in trouble, God, you're in there. And all you, all you ask for is to call on your name, praise you. And you said that you inhabit our praise. In other words, you dwell. you comfortable. you lay. In our praise, God. And God, whatever is in our way, God, whatever is in our way, God, God, lay your word and remove it, God. Remove everything. Remove every dagger out of our back. Remove every pain out of our heart. Remove everything that's hurting and lift us up again. And draw us near. We'll run after you and we're going to thank you. And we're going to bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you. God bless you. Gosh, God bless you. Amen. Amen. I hope the word bless you. If you if the, if you receive the word, please put it in the comment. I receive the word. So I receive the word. I receive the word. I receive the word. Oh, you welcome. You welcome. You welcome, T. Uh, you welcome. You welcome. You welcome. Amen. Amen. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for all your support. I guess you can tell I'm always pressing my way. I, I got to press. I know I get blessed in the press. Amen. And I'm pressing my way. I'm pressing my way. Good. Receive. Receive the word of God. Receive from the presence of God. Receive what God is saying. And as you receive him, whatever, and as you receive him, whatever you ask him for, let it be so. According to your faith, be it done unto you. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. You know what? I will say this. I will say this. I will say this. I thank you all for your inboxes. I thank you all for your words of encouragement. I do. I know I encourage all the time. I thank you. I'm human. You know, I have feelings and I have needs and, you know, I love God, but I press my way. I ignore a lot of stuff and that's why I come on. I recognize what's going on, but I know it. See, because I know God is greater. And I know I'm a king. And a king rule. And see, a king ain't, king ain't underneath. King stand, a king stands on top. Most definitely. And so I know that. And you know, it's crazy because for years, years when I was born, I had a middle name I hated. I hated it because in those days, I was born in 67. In those days, uh, the name that was given to me was kind of almost like a racist, a racial name. And, <laughs> uh, and I hated it. I, I was mad at my mom and my dad until I got a little old and I started reading a little bit. Then I found out, see, my name is, uh, my name is Leroy. And, but I realized and understand that Leroy means the king. And so now I like it. <laughs> I didn't have to do a little study to understand what my name meant. And so I ain't going to give up. I'm going to fight. And while I'm fighting, when, when, I, when I knock a door open, I'm open the door for everybody to go, to go through. Everybody go through. That's that's my that's how I feel. And if when every when everybody if people around me that are weak and I'm strong, I pick and carry about everybody I can up. Just like I don't know if you saw the uh, the video that I posted of my son Daniel. I kind of like in my archives went back and kind of was showing some of the videos. If you, if you go in my archives, you can see some of the videos when my son first got paralyzed in 2018 May 9th and. Uh, the progress and I, 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 I recorded everything. I record everything. Not only I record everything. I did videos every day. I prayed every day. Every day. Through that hard time, I prayed. Through that hard time, I came over here and told people about God, told them going to heal, told, told them God going to bring them out, all that. And still going to do it because I trust God. That's all I know. Through my toughest times, and I, and I know I looked ugly. I looked worn out. I looked bad. But I didn't care. My bad look and what I was going through, my offering. What I was feeling was my offering.
And I was giving it to God. And so when I come on here, it's my offering. I'm giving it to God. And so I'm like, whatever, God, I'm helping your people. I'm, I'm blessing, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever gift you give me, God, I'm helping. I'm doing whatever, whatever you call me to do. And whenever you decide to remember me, God, remember me. That's my posture. And that's my position. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. And amen. Amen. You have a good day. God bless you.